Hello, good afternoon. Here with Atelier Fine Foods and Catering, I'm Victor Scargo, Culinary Director for Boisse Collection. A lot of people ask me about making sauces and stocks, and so today I thought we'd start with something somewhat basic, something that everybody can get access to, and just making a basic chicken stock. And so that's kind of all about, of course, good fresh ingredients, which I think everybody can get these days. A lot of times you'll go to your local store or the market, you can buy a whole chicken, um, and they'll butcher it for you and then you can bring those parts home. But a lot of times we just ask for the breast or we ask for the leg and thigh or an airline breast that has the, the one bone on there. But what I suggest is asking for all of the, the whole chicken that you're paying for anyway, bringing that home and making a couple different chicken stocks. Taking that, cooling it down and then freezing it for when you need it. So. Let's get started. So the first thing I've got here is I've got two different sets of chicken bones here. These are just the, the carcass of the chicken. The breast has been pulled off, the legs and thighs. And this is what I would use to make a blonde chicken stock. I would just take this, put it in my pot, and add some cold water. A lot of times people will think, oh, well, let's, I'm gonna add some hot water to it. That'll make it fast or whatever. We want the cold water in there. We want it to come, the flavors to come together nice and slow. We don't wanna speed this process along. When you're making stocks and sauces, it's very important, take your time. That's why you're gonna make it in a little bit larger batch. You can cool it down and then freeze it. So I've got my, my bones in there. I haven't done anything to those. I haven't roasted them or anything. And I'm just gonna add some cold water over the top. And that's probably one and a half to two chickens in there. Cold water goes over the top. And I've got that going. So that's all I would add at this point. I would turn up my heat and I would bring it to a simmer. Once it comes to a simmer, the next thing that I would do, and a friend of mine showed me this, is I would take some ice cubes. I would add the ice cubes to the stock. So I've used a little bit less water than I normally use in here because I'm gonna add some ice to this. What that's gonna do is get the fat on top of the stock to congeal, come together, and so then I can ladle it off. Otherwise, I've got this greasy stock. You notice with the bones, there's still a bit of fat on there. That fat's gonna be great flavor, but I'm gonna use the ice to get that to come together and then skim that fat off, because I don't want a greasy stock, but I do want a flavorful stock, okay? So a blonde chicken stock, I'm gonna use as something light, as a protein and things. I'm gonna use it as a background element to things uh, like sauces or soups sometimes if I'm not using a vegetable stock. What I've got here are some chicken bones that I've browned. I've just gone in the oven. I've browned them up a little bit and you can see, you know, the fat on there has, has cooked down a little bit. They've got nice flavor there, but I wanna make sure that that fat doesn't go into my stock. So I'm gonna pour that off. And it'll be a very similar process. I'd pour that off and then what I would do is I would pull those bones off. I'd add some vegetables to that. I've got a basic mirepoix here. Um, everybody does it a little bit different, but usually it's onion, some carrot. I have leeks in here. I have fennel, because I like fennel as well. If you don't like fennel, then don't put the fennel in there. Um, and some celery. I've also got bay leaves and thyme that I like to throw in there as well. So, you know, lighter elements. I wouldn't use something like rosemary, a little bit harsher flavor. I just want things to kind of surround it. I've also got in there some of my favorite uh, dried herbs. I've got coriander seed, fennel seed, and a little bit of black peppercorn seed. Those are kind of the aromatics that I'd like to use in there. So whether I'm doing a blonde or a brown chicken stock, all we're doing, the only difference is whether or not we've roasted the bones or not. The other element that I would do is that with a brown chicken stock, I would do half water and half blonde chicken stock to make my brown chicken stock. That way it's got a little bit more protein already and it's gonna be a little bit more flavorful stock, okay? So here we've got some chicken stock that we've already done. So I can kind of demonstrate what it looks like when you're gonna get that fat to come off. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to this. And you only need to cook this for probably an hour and a half, two hours. After that, all you're gonna be doing is reducing it. You're not gonna get a whole lot more flavor out of it. So after about an hour and a half, two hours, it'll look like this. I've added some chicken or some ice cubes to it. And I'm gonna swirl around like this to make kind of a whirlpool motion. What that does is it pushes the fat to the outside and then I can take my ladle and just skim off the last little bit of fat that's on there. And then you get down and you see you've got like this really nice clear broth. It's got some specks in there, but then we can strain those out with a colander, a chinois, and get it down to just the stock that we want. All right, 
So this blonde stock, a lot of times I'll cook things with vegetable stock just to make sure for vegetarians out there. We've got a lot of vegetarians, but also I'd, I could use this blonde chicken stock to make forbidden rice, to make risotto, to make other things if I didn't want to uh, just keep it strictly vegetarian, all right? So what we have on our stations in normal kitchens is we have a lot of times we'll have a bain marie, this is called a bain marie, and we'll have a bain marie of blonde chicken stock that we can just use to thin stuff down, to add a little protein to things. You can also take this as well. Uh, one of the favorite sauces that we have is a brown butter sauce. If you take some blonde chicken stock like this and reduce it down slowly, it gets those proteins to really, to really activate. If you make a brown butter after you've had your lemon juice, then you can add a little bit of this reduced blonde chicken stock and it'll keep your emulsification together so that you've got this really rich, nice lemon caper brown butter sauce. And you can use that on chicken piccata, you could use that on a fish dish, and just enough to help with the protein, but not enough to where you're gonna taste that chicken stock. So I encourage everybody, go out there, you know, when you're buying your, your airline chicken breast or your chicken breast, keep the skin on. Use the skin to make your chicken stock if you're afraid of eating it. Um, get those bones, those carcasses. It's very easy. Two hours, you're making a chicken stock. You don't have to babysit it. You're bringing it to a boil. You're adding a little bit of ice to it, getting that fat off. Then you would add your vegetables to that, your aromatics. Let it cook for an hour and a half to two hours. Strain it. Cool it down, you'll have this nice flavorful chicken broth like I've got here. And then you can, once it's cool, package it up in little deli containers or glad containers or something like that. You can even, I know people sometimes will put it in ice cube trays. That way when you need a little chicken stock, you just pull out a cube, boom, and you've got it there for, for all the time. You don't have to go and buy anything that's in a carton. You've got nice flavorful chicken stock and you've already paid for it anyway when you went to go buy your chicken. So you might as well take the bones and make a great chicken stock. I encourage everybody to go out there, make your own stocks, cool them down, freeze them, and it'll really set you up to make some fantastic sauces. If you don't have great stocks, you can't make good sauces. If you don't have good sauces, you can't have a finished dish. Thank you all for watching. Again, Victor Scargo, Culinary Director for Boisset Collection, Atelier Fine Foods and Catering.